Welcome to my lecture online. Now that we know how to calculate the heat transfer through spheres and cylinders, it's time to take a look at the thermos bottle. Now the thermos bottle is basically a cylinder. It has a certain height, let's call it the length, in this case 30 centimeters, and we have a thick wall through which the heat transfers very slowly because the heat conductivity constant tends to be a very small number. Now, here in this particular example, the thickness of that wall is about half a centimeter. The outside radius is 4.5 centimeters and the inside radius is 4 centimeters. Let's say we pour in one liter of hot coffee. Let's say the, in the initial temperature is 90 degrees centigrade, just a little bit below boiling. The outside temperature is 20 degrees centigrade and we allow the coffee to cool down until it reaches 50 degrees centigrade. The question is, how long will that take? We're going to ignore the heat escape through the top and through the bottom. We're only going to consider the outside wall. The equation that we have, that we've derived in the past, was that it's equal to the, the heat conductivity or the heat transfer through the wall is equal to the difference in the temperature divided by the natural log of B over A over 2 pi KL. Basically, this quantity right here is what we call the heat resistance of that cylindrical shape. Now remember that the heat transfer is a function of the difference in temperature and of course in this case the temperature difference is going to change from an initial difference of 70 centigrade degrees to a final difference of 30 centigrade degrees. So how do we calculate that? Well what we're going to do here is to make things a little bit simpler is we're going to write this equation as follows. We're going to write as Q dot is equal to some constant, let's call it K, times delta T. Now notice that in this case K is going to be equal to 2 pi KL over the natural log of B over A. So the big capital K is going to be equal to 2 pi KL, that's the denominator here, divided by the natural log of B over A. So we just take this whole thing, write as K times delta T, if we take the inverse of that, we get that capital K. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this equation and write it as follows up here. So we have dq dt is equal to some constant capital K, which is equal to this right here, and those are all constants, times delta t, and of course what we can do is we can take t minus, well, since the outside temperature is 20 degrees, we could go t minus 20, but to make things simpler, we can simply say that we're looking for the delta temperature and let's for simplicity write that as zero degrees. So it doesn't matter if we write the outside temperature zero degrees then the T initial will be 70 and the T final will be 30 so it makes no difference. So that means that our equation dQ dt can now be written as K times T. At the same time we also need to think about the heat being pulled out of the hot coffee so we can think of the equation that Q, the heat contained in the coffee, is equal to mc times delta t. And of course, in this case again, delta t can be considered simply the difference between t and zero, so we can write t again. And now, if we take the differential of that, we can say that dq is equal to mc times dt. So now, if we replace the dq here, by what this is equal to, then the equation here becomes mc dt divided by d time, so this is temperature, this is time, is equal to k times t. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to separate the variables here, and we're going to write dt over t is equal to k divided by mc times dt. So now we have the temperature on the left side, the time on the right side, so we can integrate this and we can integrate this. And so uh, let's see, coming up here because I'm kind of out of room down there. So that means on the left side we end up with the natural log of time, of temperature, and of course we're going to go from, well in this case we only care about the delta t, not the temperature, but the delta t which drives the heat flow through the thermos bottle. So we need the delta T initial for the upper limit and the delta T final for the lower limit equals K divided by MC times the time that's evaluated from zero to the final time.
Of course, that's simply the time that it takes, which is what we're looking for. So in this case, on the left side, we end up at the natural log of delta t initial divided by delta t final is equal to, in this case, we get k over mc times simply the total time, which is what we're looking for. That means that the total time t is equal to the natural log of delta t initial divided by delta t final multiplied times mc and divided by k. Now remember, the capital K is what we have over here, which means that the time is equal to mc times the natural log of the delta t initial divided by delta t final, delta t final, and let's make sure that that looks like a t here, t final, multiply times the natural log of b over a, all divided by 2 pi kl. Got to make sure I don't make any algebraic errors. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers. So the total time, which is going to be in seconds, is going to be the mass, which is 1,000 grams per liter. C is 1 calorie per gram per centigrade degree, times the natural log of the initial temperature difference divided by the final temperature difference, which is 70 divided by 30, times the natural log of the outside radius divided by the inside radius, which is 4.5 divided by 4, all divided by 2 pi times k, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 5, all divided by, let's see, L, which is 30. So everything is going to be in centimeters, centigrade degrees, and calories. All right, now with a calculator, we should be able to figure out what that is equal to. So first of all, we get 4.5 divided by 4, take the natural log of that. Then we multiply that times 70 divided by 30, take the natural log of that, equals, multiply times 1,000, equals, divide by 2, divide by pi, divide by 2, e to the fifth minus, and divide by 30, and we get a total of 26,472 seconds. 26,472 seconds. Of course, to most of us, that doesn't mean a lot, so let's convert that to hours. So divide by 3,600, which gives us 7 hours, 0.35, or in minutes, 441 minutes. Okay, so that's equal to 441 minutes. And let's then convert it to hours. So divide by 60, and that gives us 7.35 hours. All right, that's a pretty good thermos bottle. But have you ever noticed with thermos bottles, when you put a hot liquid in there, it seems to cool down faster than when you put a cold liquid in there and that cold liquid heating up. Why is that? Why does, it, why does the hot liquid in the thermos bottle cool down more quickly than a cool liquid heats up? Well, it's all about the difference in the temperature. Notice that the driver, the time that it takes, depends on the difference in the temperature. If the temperature difference is very small, the heat flow will be very slow and the time will be greater. If the difference in temperature is very large, then the heat flow will be large and the temperature will be not as, not as long. So that's why things cool down faster because the greater difference in temperature than heat up because the smaller difference in temperature. But anyway, a good thermos bottle should keep a liquid warm for at least six, seven, eight hours when it's a good one. And that is how we figured it out.